Many people were upset with the booking of Kurt Angle's final match, having Baron Corbin not only face him, but defeat him. It is it's a two-way street, really, as Baron Corbin is a younger superstar and the quote-unquote wrestling way is for the veteran to lose to the up-and-comer. But I feel that they could have done it a whole lot differently than just having Baron Corbin beat him and then having Kurt Angle end up getting revenge on him the next night on Raw, only to fall to Lars Sullivan. I am Logan, and this is PWP DIY Kurt Angle's Last Match. Now, as I said, Kurt Angle did lose his retirement match to Baron Corbin, but on the next night on Raw, he ended up Angle slamming Corbin, getting the one up on him, until Lars Sullivan came out and took Kurt Angle out, and we have not seen him on TV since. This somewhat made sense, but if you were going to have Kurt Angle get revenge on Baron Corbin, wouldn't you have rather it happened at WrestleMania? Now, I am perfectly okay, as I said, with Kurt Angle losing at WrestleMania. Many great legends have lost at WrestleMania. And yes, I know what you're going to tell me. Ric Flair lost to Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels lost to Undertaker. Stone Cold lost to The Rock. Kurt Angle losing to Baron Corbin doesn't compare. I understand. But what you have to think about is that everyone I listed was in a sense a Vince McMahon guy. Yes, even Ric Flair, just due to the legacy of Flair and how he never really turned his back on WWE. Kurt Angle, on the other hand, left for all those years to go to Impact, and he had some of his best matches in Impact, which many feel led to a somewhat stingy grudge that Vince had against him. Now, obviously, when Kurt came back and they had the meetup again, Vince loved him, hugged him, But Kurt was never really seen as one of his boys anymore. And what made this even more clear is how Kurt wanted to come back and have one last run within the company. But instead of wrestling, he was a GM. Now, recently, Kurt Angle said that being the GM, not wrestling as much, is what eventually led to his retirement because it locked his body up. Now, going back to WrestleMania... The Baron Corbin feud still made sense. Baron Corbin cost Kurt his job, but then Kurt Angle ended up costing Baron Corbin a couple matches, including appearing as a Los Conquistadores. Now that was perfectly fine. But the thing that I would have changed, I would have continued with the match. I would have made it a little bit longer, maybe given Kurt Angle a couple more things. Maybe not had him do a moonsault, although it did give him a reason to lose cleanly without Baron Corbin outright beating him but still maybe if Corbin cheats so that way Kurt Angle looks good the moonsault was brilliant though but still have Corbin cheat use a chair use brass knocks maybe have Kurt Angle come out in his medal and have Corbin use um, the medal something but after the match the lights will go down and the crowd will start to go nuts you would then see a single light shining from the ramp down to the ring. It is when this light is shown that we hear a gong, but instead of the familiar theme, we hear... Then the Undertaker rides down in his motorcycle and comes out to take out Baron Corbin, who, after beating Kurt Angle, has started to continue to beat on Kurt Angle, trying to certainly end his career. It is when The Undertaker steps in the ring that Baron Corbin is face-to-face with the American Badass, only for Kurt Angle to stand up and hit Corbin with an angle slam. Kurt Angle then will drop his straps and be prepared to put the ankle lock on Corbin while Undertaker tells him to wait. He picks Baron Corbin up and hits him with a last ride, and then Kurt Angle can finally put the ankle lock on Baron Corbin. 
then the two legends can celebrate in the ring. And this not only has Kurt Angle have a defining ending to his career, but it will give The Undertaker an appearance at this year's WrestleMania, which many fans missed. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why have Undertaker come out for Kurt Angle? But you have to remember, the two have always really been intertwined. Maybe not as directly as Undertaker or Kane, but they still did have a history feuding for the WWF title. And they had the feud for the World Heavyweight Championship before WrestleMania 22. So having these two legends, two of the last from their era, the Ruthless Aggression era, come out. And then the same night that the Doctor of Thugonomics comes back, it would be a nice way to put a cap on the Ruthless Aggression era. You can still have Lars Sullivan come out the next night on Raw, but have it where Baron Corbin is in the ring bragging about beating Undertaker and how legends can't stop me, I'm Baron Corbin. I ended Kurt Angle's career. Then have Lars come out and take out Baron Corbin. This doesn't make Lars a heel or a face, as his gimmick right now is just beating people up. Now, why do I feel this is better than what they put on? Because... As I said, it gives Kurt Angle a defining ending, not to mention he doesn't have to wait a night to get his revenge. He does it right there on the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania 35. This not only is a great ending to Kurt Angle's career, but it can give the fans their American Badass Undertaker that they wanted at last year's WrestleMania and then this year's WrestleMania, and he could still come out as the dead man the next night on Raw and go after Elias. Now, do you think this is how Kurt Angle's career should have ended? Or should he have ended fighting John Cena? Or maybe Rey Mysterio? Let us know either here in the comments or at our email, prowrestlingproverbs at gmail.com. And of course, thank you for listening to this DIY episode on Kurt Angle's final match. Although, not totally focusing on the match, but the events surrounding it. As always, if you want to stay up to date with our videos and other wrestling news, follow us on Twitter at PW Proverbs, and make sure to like and share our videos here on YouTube. And as always, I'm Logan, and this has been Pro Wrestling Proverbs.